This video will talk about the components of data. In order to start talking about data, to talk about visualizing data, we first need to know some definitions and have some vocabulary to describe what data are. So what exactly are data? Data, lots of definitions exist, but data are really truths about the world. Uh, in its simplest sense, uh, data are a collection of facts. What about the different components of data? We can start thinking about individual data points as uh, different components. And so as an example, a case might be described as an object described in a data set. A variable might be described as a characteristic of a case. So as an example, we might have a tree uh, and maybe we collect something, some information about that tree, uh, such as its species. Uh, well, in this case, the, the variable might be species and the case might be uh, something about that species. A label distinguishes different cases and then a value are the measurements. And so what values might different species have uh, in a data set? And so these will be important definitions as we talk more about the components of data. We can generally categorize variables that we're interested in as being either categorical or quantitative. Categorical variables, we're placing cases into groups or categories. And so that could be species, that could be the season of the year. Are you in fall, winter, spring, or summer? What about the US state that you're looking in? Quantitative variables are numbers. They take numerical values. How much does a fish weigh? What's the height of a tree? How much phosphorus is in a lake? all examples of quantitative variables. Categorical data can be of different kinds. And so as the graph here says, uh, I am a bird, I am yellow, I am awesome. I am T-Rex, I am green, I am extinct. And so these are all examples of different categories of data. So data could be nominal. Uh, so these can be the labels. Uh, and so this could be things like the bird, the color yellow, uh, the adjective awesome. Ordinal represents the order of values, and so the order of those values might be important, but the difference between each order maybe can't be quantified. And so an example of that might be looking at the uh, decay of a tree through time. So if you see a log in the forest and it's decaying, uh, oftentimes people will denote a decay class. It's a decay class one. That means it's a freshly fallen log that hasn't decayed very much. Or it's a decay class five. It's very advanced in decay. It's been sitting on the forest floor for years. It's basically rotting. And so that would be a good example of an ordinal variable. The order of the variables matters as you go from decay class one to decay class five, but we don't necessarily know and can quantify the difference between each category, say a decay class one and a decay class two. Quantitative data include numbers, remember. So any of those numbers, you can actually do something. You can add them, you can multiply them, you can divide them. If that makes sense, then you have quantitative data. And so we can think about there being discrete data. So there are three different kinds of cones here. Cone one has two scoops. We can think about that as discrete. Continuous data might be things more like weights and temperatures and things like that. Cone three weighs 79 grams. Cone two is at 8.3 degrees Fahrenheit. So some examples of quantitative data are the interval. So if we know the order of the data points and we know the differences between the values, we have an interval. For a ratio, we know the order and the differences between those two values and they also can't contain zero. And so we can think about intervals and ratios as being two examples of quantitative data. The sport of baseball is swimming with lots of data. Any of you that have watched the movie Moneyball uh, starring Brad Pitt might know this. Uh, Moneyball in really in recent years has driven a lot of the analytics movement that we've seen in a lot of professional sports. And so let's take a, a batting lineup uh, as an example. So here we're looking at a batting lineup for the Minnesota Twins. And what we're seeing is the batting order. So a smart coach will order his batters uh, 
in a way that produces the most runs. And so you can see the list of the batters there from one through nine. So it's categorical in that sense. Uh, who's going to bat first? Who's going to bat second? Who's going to bat third? The player and the position then are categorical and nominal. Uh, and so we know that Miguel Sano is going to be playing third base. Uh, third base, it's a category of position uh, that you might take on the field. And then, of course, a player's stats uh, or how well they're doing uh, are off and their numbers. They're either discrete or they're continuous numerical values. Uh, and so that indicates how well a player does in certain situations. And so this is a good example. Uh, there's a lot of examples of data from professional sports that we can look at that provide different kinds of data, whether they're quantitative or categorical, whether they're nominal or ordinal, or whether they're interval or ratio based. So it's important to know the definitions of how we describe data before we start thinking about visualizing them.